All right. So do you guys remember Jess Dugan? We talked about her or them in our very first video. And so we're just going to give you a little bit of a reminder because our video today will be an activity based on their artwork. So just a quick reminder of Jess Dugan and their art. Um, so Jess uses their art to um, kind of look at the discussion of gender and identity. Um, Jess is a photographer, so she uses self-portraits um, and just portraits of different subjects as well um, and explores their identity and identity of others. And Jess's goal is to express the emotion of finding one's identity. Um, and then she uses many subjects um, such as the tulips that we discussed and the jeans. All right, so do you guys remember uh, looking at this photograph of the jeans? This was a photograph taken in 2014. And then here is the tulips image again. And if you remember, we discussed in the other video the how Jess wanted to relate this back to human contact. And um, so those are just a few examples on Jess's work and how she can use, how anyone can use portraiture um, to talk about themselves or um, their feelings with just different objects. So some subjects that might represent your identity that isn't necessarily your face. It could include an animal, a place, a hobby, or a food. So think of some other examples. What else can you think of that represents your identity? So with that, we are going to do a 15-minute watercolor self-portrait. So what you're going to need and what is provided for you is the watercolor paints, a paintbrush, a cup with water, watercolor paper, and a paper towel. In the next slide, we will show you a video on a quick demo on how to use your watercolor palette and just like the different tricks of using less water versus using more. And then you can use these tricks to apply them to your watercolor self-portrait. So again, you will need a watercolor paper for this activity, a palette of watercolor, a paintbrush, and a cup with water. You can also use colored pencils if you'd like. So to demonstrate the use of watercolor, Angel is first going to sketch out using a pencil very lightly sketch out her idea. She's going to sketch a circle. And you want to make sure that your pencil is touching the paper very lightly so that the watercolor can go right on top of it without the pencil coming through, at least not too much. So you're going to dip the paintbrush and then use the side of the cup to get about half of the water off before you dip it in the color that you want. And that's going to give you a very vibrant color. When you add more water, the paint becomes less opaque and more vibrant. Opaque means that the paint has a lot of color and isn't very see-through. So when it has more water and then you add it to the paper, it's going to become a lot less vibrant and a lot more light. So with not a whole lot of water and a good amount of paint, Angel's going around. The edges of her circle, but not all the way. 
then adding a bit more water to lighten up the paint. She's adding some lightness to the inside of the circle. So what she's doing here is turning a two-dimensional circle into a three-dimensional spherical shape by adding more and more water to the paint we get a much lighter blue color by creating different shades of blue, what started as a circle is starting to look a little bit more like a ball, like something that you could pick up off of the page. So here she's got the dark, the mid-tones, and then the much lighter blues going all the way out to the edge. see that to create the very dark blue she didn't use any water at all because what we're doing now is creating a shadow make it look even more three-dimensional All right, so when you're all finished, make sure that you close your paint palette and get rid of the water by dumping it out. It's safe to put down the sink. Make sure your space is clean. So after looking at that demo video, um, you're going to think about an object that can relate back to you. Um, so think about something that you like or something you think that is able to show your identity or personality. So take five minutes to think about your object and you can feel free to sketch out your ideas on the paper using a pencil. Just like in the video, do it. You can do it very lightly so that the watercolor doesn't um, seek through the pencil. So yeah, take a few minutes. We're going to time you and just keep in mind that you guys only have about eight minutes to do the painting part. So this is going to be a very fast activity. Um, so while you guys are thinking about the your image, here are some examples that we have done. So in my example, I created a sunflower and a sunflower to me is very happy and the colors um, are very happy and warm and personally sunflowers are my favorite so that's why I chose a sunflower and I chose to paint a printmaking grayer because printmaking is my favorite type of art and it was quick and easy for me to sketch out and do and I feel like it represents my identity in a very symbolic way and also note that in mine versus Erica's, um, I didn't use a pencil first. So you don't have to use your pencil first if you don't really want to. But if you feel more comfortable using a pencil, then you can to just sketch.
sketch out a general idea, but if you're just ready to go, go ahead and start watercoloring. And with that, um, that is the end of our video. So have fun watercoloring and thank you for watching. Bye. Okay. <laughs>